Aboro Aboye. My name is Ifa Bemero Fahim Ali Bey. And this afternoon we are going to discuss some financial affairs of the Ifa Orisha community of Trinidad and Tobago. Um, before I get into such discussion, I would open by reading an Udu from A.G. Uh, this essay, Ifa, reads as follows. Let us not run the world hastily. Let us not grasp at the rope of wealth impatiently. What should be treated with mature judgment, let us not treat in a fit of temper. Whenever we arrive at a cool place, let us rest sufficiently well. Let us give prolonged attention to the future and let us give due regards to the consequences of things. This is on account of our sleeping or our end or our death. All right, that is the opening prayer for this afternoon's session. Okay, uh, today, again, as I said, we're going to discuss some financial matters. Uh, first, the first question is basically, what are the needs of our community? And this is a question that has to be very seriously pondered on and considered. Uh, as most other communities that exist, we have the needs for basic infrastructure. If we look at most other communities, they have uh, schools, in some cases credit unions, uh, business associations, because many communities own businesses also. Um, some owns hospital and healthcare, which is an essential thing for our community because our discussion again is concerning the affairs of the Ifa Orisha community. And I want to say by extension, as far as the history is concerned, that would include people calling themselves spiritual Baptists, shelter Baptists, uh, etc. etc. Um, on the Ifa Orisha discussion group, I posted an extensive article on uh, basically what is called the Cooperative Type Business Association, or what we will call a SUSU or a credit union. Now, as most of our people should know, the traditional SUSU, not the modern uh, concept of the SUSU that is going around, the traditional SUSU was brought to the Caribbean by African people. And this has been a very uh, old tradition and it has been a long-standing tradition. This has been the method of savings that has been used by our ancestors here for a very, very long time. Uh, much of the ancestral lands that were purchased after the times of slavery were purchased using the same susu methods. Uh, many of the businesses that were owned by African people in Trinidad were started off through similar financial processes. The post that I made that had a proposition, uh, we're going to discuss that now in some measure of detail, so that um, persons who are interested would be able to come on board and would be able to participate in these joint efforts that are going to be made by our community. What I proposed, even though it could be used in any community, that particular idea is an idea that was firstly created by an owl by the name of Ifayomi Menkepra Merisuten. And it was brought to myself and another owl 
by the name of Dr. Loha for us to form this association where we would be able to source financing. And I thought it was a very good idea and I thought it would have been something worthwhile to bring to the general community so that other persons who have owned, who own business and who aspire towards business ownership, whether it be a small scale business, a medium scale business, or a large business, can use this particular SUSU method of acquiring capital, whether it be for extension or to start from scratch. All right. Um, <clears throat> with all of the things currently taking place in the financial community in Trinidad and Tobago, I think it should be a great eye opener for all, all African people in Trinidad to become very aware of where they put their money, what they do with their money, and access accessibility to resources. You know what it means loans or credit facilities being available to themselves now in like in wake of all that has taken place i don't want to go into no detail concerning issues such as the dss because i am sure everyone is well aware as there is a lots and lots of information that is going around concerning the uh current situation all right um <clears throat> what was proposed basically is the coming together of individuals to form basically what is called a susu all right let me talk a little bit of firstly what is a susu a great example of a susu would be where you would have a small number of people let's say three persons and these persons decide to put into the pot let's say if it's a hundred dollars each week when all of the money is collected by a responsible individual what would happen is that three hundred dollars would be given to one of the individuals who is participating in the susu so we will call that individual individual number one so at the end of the first week individual number one would collect from the pot what was collected from each individual member so available to that individual would be $300 at the end of the first week, where that individual number one would contribute, individual number two would contribute, and individual number three would also contribute, which will bring it the amount to 300 And one person would now have access to that $300 for that particular week. The following week, the same thing is done. Each member, member number one member number two member number three contributes a hundred dollars and then the money now goes to member number two and on the third week all the members number one two and three contribute and the three hundred dollars now goes to member number three and that closes off that susu that is one cycle of the entire susu um of course most of us who were born in Trinidad and in other parts of the Caribbean should be or may be familiar with the susu. You may have heard of it. Some of us may not know exactly how it works, but that was just an example that I used, right? What was suggested in the IFA traditional discussion group is that <clears throat> 10 persons, and in this case, specifically, my reference was to individuals interested in business because I showed images of the various basic necessities that people have as human beings. The main photo shows a young woman with two pumpkins in her hand and a garden in the background. The reason that image was used is so that we would understand that we need food. Uh, the need for food is a basic human need and our African community, particular in, particularly in Trinidad, we do not have enough individuals who are actively engaging in the agricultural industry. So one of the things that we need to do is we need to look at 
investing money in the agriculture industry. We need to also be particip actively participating in the growing of food to meet the needs of our community. All right. I also put a photo there with a lot of baked products, which is food also, but these are refined products. Our community need to have businesses also producing manufactured food products. Okay. So for all the people who are following this stream, I hope you would uh, take very close notes of the needs that our community have and that you would probably try to develop some sort of plan towards having some measure of involvement in one of these endeavors that I am mentioning. In terms of refined products, it could also go beyond just food products. All right, because we would also need cosmetic products like deodorant and skin lotions and these things. All right, so these are different areas that we could look at. Um, the cocoa industry, which is, is more or less a very slow industry now in Trinidad, is also an area that we could look at in terms of producing cocoa butter. Because from cocoa butter, not only come cocoa and chocolate products, but also cosmetic products. And I would also add to that that Trinidad and Tobago cocoa, which is known as the Crayola cocoa, which is a special strain of cocoa that was created here in Trinidad and Tobago and exists nowhere else in the world, is extremely valuable. It calls for a premium price on the international cocoa market. For that matter, our cocoa does not even have a fixed price. Our cocoa is auctioned off on the market at a very, very high price because of how rare and the quality and consistency of the chocolate that is produced from our cocoa. Also, the cocoa fat used in cosmetics, our own, also calls for a premium price on the international market. So these are industries that members of our community should pay some attention to and should consider if they were looking at becoming involved in agriculture. The other photograph that I included was a photograph of African textile and clothing, right? Because beside food, we also need to wear clothes, all right? There are many stores throughout Trinidad that sell clothes, but how many of these stores cater to the needs of our community? I am afraid it's very few. So therefore, we also need to look at the clothing industry for providing ourselves with the essential types of styles, you know, and prints and designs that would suit the needs that we have. We have all the different social events going on. We have the feasts, the festivals, the Thanksgivings, all these different occasions where we are required to dress in traditional clothing. So again, these are just ideas that I'm throwing out there. And it is very possible that we could have businesses in all of these areas because at, at the end of this video, you will be knowledgeable enough to figure out how resources could be acquired through community cooperation. All right. And in this particular instance, we are making direct reference to the SUSU. All right. Beside that, I also had a photograph of a house, of a wooden house. All right. Not that I am advocating that everyone should live in a wooden house, but I am advocating that we should be involved also in the construction industry. So in that photo, what I had in set is a picture of a wooden, a modest wooden house. All right. Because people need food, they need clothing, and we also need a place to live or a shelter. So what, in fact, I am advocating is that we need to also be involved in what is referred to as the construction industry. All right. Now, let me focus a little bit on the finance and for businesses in particular. Again, although the concept of this susu that I'm discussing can be used by regular people within a community, within a Ile, within a Ijuba, within a, a house of worship, whether it's called a church or a temple or whatever name you call. 
be, and the reason why these places would be ideal is because generally susus in tr the traditional sense were done among family members uh co-workers um members of the same organizations various types of organizations across the board where you would find people would come together and they would try to do this type of cooperative savings all right now the simple basic plan for 10 persons i'm going to discuss the details of it what was suggested all right and again this idea is not my own this idea came from uh brother ifayomi menkepra merisuke what was suggested is that 10 persons over a period of 10 months contributing one thousand dollars each can accumulate in that 10 months a total of a hundred thousand dollars all right this money could be loaned on contract on a rotational basis to the members of that loan pool at a very low interest rate and the reason <clears throat> that a low interest rate is a built-in element of the susu and in some cases no interest at all in the traditional susu the reason why we try to introduce this concept with the business of a low interest rate is so that the persons who are making the sacrifice to invest that thousand dollars every month into that pool for the purpose of having access to a greater amount of money is that they would derive some sort of benefit or some sort of interest on the money that they are placing in the pot that interest can either be paid off in the form of dividend which is basically what i would suggest or the other alternative is that interest could stay right within that pool and expand the pool meaning that not only would one hundred thousand be available but over a period of time is going to be that money plus interest all right and in this case that form of interest would be what is called simple interest now there was there's also one important um facet of the business pool that was brought to my attention and that is concerning uh the use of credit right um what was explained to me is that the licenses for lending funds or for granting credit needs a minimum of a hundred thousand dollars so that would mean that if persons in this pool or this association decides to get that license their businesses would now be in a position being a part of that association to give their customers credit because money lending does not only mean lending cash it could also mean having a credit facility available as a service to your customers Meaning if you were selling a product that is worth uh, $8,000, let's say your business is an appliance store and you had large appliances like refrigerators and freezers. Once you have the license, it would mean you would be in a position where you would be able to extend some sort of credit facility to your customers. All right. So the benefits are numerous. It's way, way it's way way beyond just these few little points right um <clears throat> there are several points that i also um highlighted concerning how these associations or susus are to be run uh, one of the main things is that what you need to have first and foremost is individuals who you are familiar with that is point number one and the person who is chosen to be responsible for the finance taking care of all the financial concerns must be a capable 
responsible individual. It must be, a, I would say, preferably somebody, if it's business people, the one who probably has the most business experience should be chosen to do things like making the deposits and, you know, all of that. Also, that person should not be the only individual that is allowed exclusive reign over all the finance. As far as any financial decisions are concerned, I want to believe the entire group should be able to sit together and to make full arrangements. Now, once such a, a susu or such an association is formed, it would be absolutely necessary that all the conditions are worked out from the sittings. How the loans are to be shared and all this type of detail must, must I say, be worked out, must be agreed upon before even a dime is, is, is given up, is given, is given to the association. Um, another major um, concern, because after I posted, there were a lot of um, comments on the thread. A lot of people were concerned about integrity and people being honest and people willing to pay back and all this sort of a thing. But I think most importantly is that, one, the persons must know each other and they must have a sense of commitment and a sense of loyalty and a sense of purpose. They must know why they are getting involved in something like this. It must, of course, have some sort of benefit. Again, the idea of the SUSU is to have low interest rates, to have access to resources, and also to be able to develop your business or to make it go further. Um, I mentioned before, now, now I explained how the funding is going to go. I um, want to talk a little bit now about some of the needs that the community have. That, that's basically what I want to discuss. Um, there were basically 10 points that I listed that I want to, to, to talk about. The guidelines that were given. All right. Um, The community, basically, there are several things we need. I'm going to talk a little bit about the needs of the Ifa Orisha community in Trinidad and Tobago. The Ifa Orisha community needs, first and foremost, a governing body that would oversee most of the related institutions that is needed in the community. What are these institutions? We need schools in the Ifa Orisha community. So I would strongly suggest, of course, that we try to put in place a national board that would oversee schools, scholarships, and all related things. All right. We also need some sort of health care facility because I think if you would, if you are to look, there are Adventist hospitals, Catholic hospitals. Most of the other communities also have their own health care facility. So this is something that we too will also need. Um, without financing, 
without an economic base, it would be practically impossible for us to be able to develop these institutions properly. And this is the reason why we are having this discussion concerning the SUSU specifically for small and medium businesses. And let me tell you why it is I'm suggesting that. The reason why I'm suggesting that people who want to be in business and people who are in business start forming these associations to raise funds to expand their business and to establish themselves for those who are new is that in the near future, maybe within the next six to eight months, we are planning to put on stream a national credit union for the Ifa Orisha community. Okay? This is something that, that has been discussed time and time again. But it is something that we intend to have done by next year. And when I say we, again, I discuss these ideas that I'm bringing to you with two other hours, right? Whose name I mentioned earlier. And the idea of having the Joint Business Association for raising funds, that idea, again, I'm saying this again, was put it, was brought to the uh, group by Ifayomi Menkepra Mary Suten. All right? Within that idea, besides just raising the capital, there is also the issue of having some sort of credit facility or being able to give loans, all right? To go back now to what I was saying concerning the needs, to do any of these things, to build schools, to build hospitals, um, and to have proper established businesses, we need money. So at the end of the day, we have to figure out especially in these sort of economic times, what it is that we actually need to do in order to be able to garner the type of financing that we need. I don't want to go too much into details as to what the current financial situation is, but traditionally in Trinidad, lending money for businesses to African people has been something that the banks has been very reluctant to do. I have no idea if the pretext that has been used by many of them I do not know if the pretext being used by many of them is basically to keep the African or to restrain the African into a position where he does not experience any type of social mobility or any economic advancement but if that is the case what i'm presenting here to you that is presented basically for business this model could be used within the community in smaller groups whether it's in the ile the temple the church or any other social organizations even in the workplace where we could actually pool our resources together and at different cycles allow different members to have access to the pot that would have all our contributions. Again, this has been the traditional approach of our ancestors in the past and it has worked successfully. But for us today, because of education and modernization, most of us take our resources to the established financial institutions. Some of us even take our money to the credit union. And the credit union basically is not a bad place to put your money because the credit union is owned by its members. That is point number one. Point number two is the credit unions make credit facility accessible to its members at a low interest rate. So it is most definitely the SUSU concept that is the way to go for African people. So again, if you are a member of an ELE, you know, 
you you go to your, the person in charge you go to the chief or the head or the whole or whoever is in charge and you could tell them okay you looked at this video stream and you 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 found the idea that was put forward by Aoife Bimero to be interesting and you think that it is an endeavor that we could probably use to help some of the members acquire business acquire property or buy things that they need in general okay we you know i would not advocate that when people get a chance at the pot when they get their share that they go on they splurge and they spend their money irresponsibly no i would never encourage that i would encourage people to especially in these difficult times you know to sit with your spouse for those who have families and plan a proper budget where you would be able to save money okay because saving money is very important and being able to plan plan how you spend your money is what would allow you to be able to save because if at the end of every month you just take the money and you just pay all your bills and you, you, you do this and you do that in most instances nothing is left for saving but if you plan ahead and you say okay these are the bills that i have each month these are the expenses that i have each month then you list them and you look at the amounts that has to be allotted for each expense whether it be a mortgage household maintenance, taxes, insurance, electricity, water bills, uh, gas if you own a vehicle, vehicle maintenance, phone bills, cable bills, cell phone bills, groceries, entertainment, donations, uh, car insurance, or car payments if, if you have a loan on a new vehicle child care for those having young children all right our credit cards debts debts or loans life insurance health insurance these are all regular expenses so it would be worthwhile for an individual if you're trying to have a budget where you can save a certain percentage of your income that you make a note of all these different expenses each month you itemize them you put in the actual amount right and you put in the budget amount if you're trying to save on some of these bills or in in the case where your budget is tight what you could actually do certain bills you could actually alternate meaning um where you have things like electricity bills that is not every month what it means is that if it's every two months or every three months, what you could do is break up the payments into three parts and each month you put aside one part, one third of the total amount. That way when the month actually reaches where you're required to pay the bill, you don't have to snatch out the whole amount and then you're not able to pay another bill. You know, so budgeting serves a very, very, very important role if you are trying to do or accomplish something. All right. Um, as far as the budgeting is concerned, in your budget, you can make place where you would actually save for a susu. So this is something that we should truly consider. It's something we should always look towards or look into. All right. Um, <clears throat> the idea of promoting the susu for persons interested in expanding their business and all of this as i've mentioned earlier is that the plan is next year to form a national credit union now in, in in formulating a national credit union one of the essential things we plan to do is to make loans available to the members of the national credit union now when these loans are given to members we should at that stage have at least some businesses providing some of the essential services that are needed 
you know we would want to have at least people who in our community who have formed associations for construction for agriculture for appliance supplies and businesses of that nature so that way when our members come in to get loans to buy a car or to buy an appliance you know or um soft loans for people who probably do food businesses like catering and all of that we should be able to direct them to members of our community who could provide the services that they need so that way when we have to cut out checks or to write checks for individuals who would be taking the loans then we could actually direct these resources within our community to the businesses that are already established okay so at this stage what i would like to say is this for persons who are interested in forming a business association using the traditional susu methods you can call me at 640-0887 also for persons who have financial experience meaning you have worked in the credit union or in the bank banking sector i would like you to send me a resume or your personal information at my email address which is bayman b-e-y-m-a-n at a-o-l dot com okay my email address is bayman b-e-y-m-a-n at a-o-l dot com I can be contacted at 640-0887. All right, the contact information is for business persons interested in forming the association or what we will call the susu pool. And for persons who have financial experience, you know, who would be interested in working with us to form the National Credit Union for next year. All right. So basically, um, that is the stream for today. I would have liked to open the lines for calls, but what I realize is that I do not have too many live persons on the stream. I see there is one viewer, which I thank you for viewing. And um, what I would like to say is Oda Bo, and we would continue this work. I would be back on next Friday at 6 o'clock. To try to provide more financial information for persons who are interested in advancing the community from a financial footing which is the basic requirement that we need to put in place in order to have all the institutions that we need Odabo.